What's up guys? Welcome to the Computer Information Highway for your Java programming tutorial. I think this is the 15th one. We're going to be continuing more on our progress to find the answer to life, the universe, and everything. So, we're going to be working with... So, we're, we're going to be creating another function. And this function is going to be doing something a little bit differently. And I'm doing this in a specific way so that you guys can see uh, just how deep you can like call functions. Basically, whenever I was doing, uh, whenever I had like at the end of here, and I was like plus the answer, let's just say of 21. Whenever I was doing this, you can call this an infinite num. Uh, I don't know if it's infinite number, but you can call this quite a lot inside of another function. So like, if I wanted to, I could. Like if I had some other function called like a number, a number, you could do that and that would work as well. Because a number would be giving us a number, hopefully it would be returning an integer, and it would be telling us if that, if that number is, is, is the answer, which is what this function does right here. So actually, we're going to be doing almost exactly that. Except we're going to be calling, we're going to be creating a function called um, public static int and we'll put get new number spell it right alright so we're going to be looking at we're, we're going to be looking specifically at some functions that are also built into uh, Java and what we have available to us. We've used it before, like up here, we're using the print line function and we're just using it to perform a certain task so that we can have something happen for us. So this is going to be a little bit similar to that. Also we're going to be incorporating uh, something similar to the scanner that we used earlier that was called, that was a scanner object we're going to be creating a new instance of a random object and you know what you'll see you'll see so first thing we're going to type is we want to create a new random object so we're going to do random ran so we're going to be creating a new random object called ran and we're going to be setting it equal to a new random so it's it's giving us this like it's giving us these red bars, probably like what's going on here. So if we hit Alt Enter, it can it will tell us what is potentially wrong with this program. We could either add import for Java Util Random, uh, create a class for Random. That way we can create our own class called, or so we can create our own uh, Random object. And it's just doing it again, just in a different spot. But what we want is we want to import from Java .util .random. So I hit Alt Enter to bring that up. If you just hit Enter again, it's just going to throw it in here at the top for you. See, it imported Java Util Random. So that's another one of those hotkeys that you'll probably find yourself using pretty often. <coughs> so now we have a new random. So what can we do with this random? What are the limits of this random? Well, right now we kind of it we're we're kind of at the bare bones of what a random is. So this this object ran. We're gonna we're just we want this to generate a new number for us. So in order to do that, we need to use this this ran object. So we want int uh, new num to be equal to ran. All right. So it's not quite done yet. So we have ran. But we want to use one of the methods inside of ran. And to do that, we just use the dot operator, like I was telling you with uh, in or with the input with scanner. And then you see it says next int here at the top. Now this this next int is going to give us a new integer. It's gonna give us a new random integer. So we're going to be using that. So we're going to do new ran. And this will now produce a new random integer. And then if we return new num, 
num. Oops, new num. If we return new num, it's not going to return the random number that we used before. So now what we're what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we're going to change this a little bit. We're going to keep the answer, but now in here we're going to change it from the answer to get new number. So you'll see here that now we're going to say what is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. If the answer of get get new number, so what this is doing is it's going to say is the answer of whatever this value true or false. So it kind of so the way this works is you remember how I was telling you about PEMDAS earlier? Well, it's starting with the innermost parentheses. It has to perform that operation first so it can fill the arguments of the outermost function. Since the innermost function, get new number, has no arguments inside of it or requires no parameters or anything, we don't it's we can rely on that and just use it for the answer and we can call the number that we're getting or we can use the number that we're getting from this function as the argument for the answer as well. So now, I'm going to run this and I'm going to show you what's going to happen. Alright, so what is the answer to life, the universe, and everything? It's just printing out no. Well, that's kind of because it didn't really give us any useful information to display on the screen. Um, it didn't tell us what the number was, so you got to know that nowhere in here did we tell it to print out what the number was. So we have to include that in here somewhere. If well if if we care about it we have to include the number in here. And I think we care about it. So rather than what we were doing before, we can do new int new number equals get new number. Alright. So now we're creating a new variable called new number and we're gonna get the value, create it using this random and Rather than calling that get new number in here, we're just going to set it into new number. And actually, I'm going to make this a little bit easier for us to read. Alright. Is it So now this is going to be asking, what is the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Is it new number? Well this new, well, this new number has already been computed and get new number. We went down here, we created a new random, and it, it's, it's just going to return that number. So new number now has that val uh, value. So we put it inside of here, and it's going to be telling us now what the number it is is going to be displayed. So when we run the new number, or when we run uh, the answer for new number, it's 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 still going to tell us yes or no, but at least now we know what the number is we're going to be looking for. So let's run this. <laughs> and this is why we need some extra stuff. So you'll see what is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Is it this negative huge random number and of course it's not it's not 42 that's nothing even close to it so we need to find a way to fix this we need, like we need to be a little bit more accurate so how can we incorporate that into here well that's going to be a little bit difficult so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put that into the next video <laughs> Notice how I'm pushing it off to the next one. I'm going to put it into the next video, and it's actually because I'm running out of time. I'm at nine and a half minutes on my timer, and I think YouTube has a ten minute uh, has a ten minute video timer. So I'm going to continue that in my next video, where we'll, we'll be talking about how to specify just where, like, the bounds of random. All right, I'll see you guys next time.